massive hello to everybody. How are we all doing? Rocking and rolling here. How's sound doing? So 24th of May, 2017, no trade calls, no recommendations, every response for their own stuff. We're here for educational purposes only. Um, record this, post it on YouTube as long as, uh, as soon as it's done. So guys, <clears throat> let's get this cracking. Let's get this rocking. Let's get this rolling. Let's do this uh, short and sweet and simple. So what's going on here? So basically it's all about right now, you know, DXY. So we've had a very nice break here, right? A couple of a very nice, you know, all these, uh, all these uh, highs, lower highs coming back in, uh, reverse back, the 100 being pivotal. And then we have the puke back down, retraced, follow through, right? So that's very, very nice move. So the big question here is, are we going to get a bigger move to the upside or is it going to be a little bit of a dead cat bounce right so that's the big question so i would say on the upside the first level to watch is this breakdown zone here right see what happens there as long as we don't get back above there you'll see a lot of people trying to sell into this trying to play for this move all the way back down as long as we don't get back in there we get back in there we could easily see a ramp up back into the 100 right so i'll try and be a little bit more focused on currencies here because i know people like those um, what I think there's a couple of interesting things here uh, playing out on the currency. So again, if you're looking at yen, you know, taking that onto yen, what does that mean for yen? Um, basically, we had that breakdown zone, right? And it's the same thing. You know, are we going to get s sold here? Is this just that's it? It's a little dead cat bounce. Are you going to get a little bit more of a retracement for that continuation back down, or is that it? That, that, that's the big question. That's what it's all about. Now, we would tend to expect a little bit more downside. So I think here, if you're trying to play the short side, as long as we don't get a day close back above the 113, um, this move is still in play. We start to get a day close above the 113, then it's really, I would say, it's a, it's a no-go on that move, okay? Uh, interesting thing we've been discussing about the fact that, you know, it was... Um, we're like, li liking to look for some kind of fades on, on Aussie, Kiwi. And Aussie, we got a very nice move. If you remember, I think we actually did a live update on a Wednesday here um, or a Thursday after the RBNZ decision. And we said, you know, we, we like the scalp longs here. And that move is pretty much done here. You know, um, if you look at the way this has moved back up, you've got a whole cluster of uh, moving averages right back here defending. And if you look at the move down from these uh, highs, actually, let me get the fib tool. These highs, oh, why isn't this working? Highs back into these lows. You got the 50 back of this whole move back down coming in with these cluster of moving averages there, right? So, you know, as long as this holds, this be the front run for a continued move back down and try to continue here. So it's the same thing also in terms of DXY. You know, is this going to be a little bounce and then we're continuing this way or is that it, right? We're, we've, we're done and we're coming right back down here. So I think those are some... Uh, fairly interesting things that are trying to play out. Uh, as far as we're concerned, we talked, especially also in the in the update about the 130 being really pivotal on cable, right? Let's just get rid of these. And saying that we had about, you know, maybe 200 to the upside, 200 to the downside. Um, I think that, you know, that uh, keep an eye on how we react around that 130. And, and you'll see that you're still getting an awful lot of uh, of selling coming in and to us it looks like basically you know there's still more uh, uh, more downside or there's plenty of, of sellers here and you know um, people who've been following here for a while no surprise you know we're structurally bearish this uh, this pair here but if you look at something like a one hour chart it's even more it's even more apparent right let's get rid of these moving averages you can see that all these spikes above the 130 are getting smacked so i think it's the same thing as we said on sunday as long as we get a hold below the 130 we think the 128 is coming into play if we start to get daily closes above so that would mean that all these sellers coming in trying to keep it down can't do the job then we expect that 132 but we really think the line is the sand 
is to keep an eye on this 130 and how the market reacts around this okay having said this you know one of our preferred plays you know also structural plays is still euro gpb um, if you look at this you know we'd expect this to stay um, to stay bid and uh, let's get back on a daily actually here we really liked all these pushes back into these lows that couldn't get any traction especially this little gap up gap fill really and holding back higher so the way we're looking at this is i think you you, you know you can make a pretty good fa case for uh for for a number of things here right you know the clearly the bear case is still that there's an awful lot of pressure on here and we're going to resolve to the downside especially after you saw the action uh, right here. But we still think we're building some kind of a base and we'd expect this to move higher as the euro strengthens and as we move into the Brexit, uh, sterling continues to weaken. So we particularly like this, you know, especially if we can hold, you know, any move back down into here that continues to hold, we, we expect this ultimately to move higher. But we understand that there's clearly uh, pressure on right here, right now, right? With this whole series of of lower highs so it's a tricky one if you look at it from a, a daily perspective here coming in on the one hour um, it's it's fairly interesting structure you see how y you've got the market had tried to smack this down right and and look at it here where it's trying to base so I think even here on, on an intraday basis, this is a very interesting place to play for a moment. But, you know, bears will be looking for closes below this area to try and get short and look for a market to come back down into this whole cluster of action. And, you know, the bulls, you know, we'd favor probably looking for any positive, any signs of life here, right? Any signs of life This trying to pop into this to an opportunity to get long to try and move back into those highs again. So fairly uh, interesting level here on the one hour on the daily. And it's not a, um, it's not a dissimilar level to where uh, Euro is trading, right? But I think <clears throat> in terms of the interesting opportunities this morning, this is probably um, the most interesting chart, okay? This is probably the most interesting chart. Now, I suppose we have to look at crude since we're going into this OPEC meeting. So what's happening here on crude? I mean, the big question is this uh, by the rumor sell the fact. We'll have to see what comes out. It's always, you know, it's very tricky to say. And basically, I, I still think that any kind of move here without anything concrete is a very nice uh, is a very nice sell zone. You know, and the big question, I think a lot of people are looking to try and sell back into the zone is, you know, what happens if we don't even get into the zone? So, again, tomorrow will be uh, more interesting in terms of OPEC, but that's, you know, the, the bottom line is if we close day above 55, then you'd expect those 60 bucks to come into play fairly quickly. But unless we can close back above that level, we'd expect uh, that the market has some kind of unresolved uh, business back into, into the 40 handle, right? Um, that's the way we'd be, uh, we would be... Uh, um, we would be looking at this here, okay? Uh, what else? Anybody, uh, anything specific they were looking at? I think another very interesting one, since we're talking about uh, crude, is I think CAD is particularly interesting. So we had, uh, you know, we talked about these longs here, and we talked about finishing this, uh, this symmetrical move to the upside. Um, and you see here, this is staying fully in trend. This was a very nice... Uh, very nice pullback to get long for the completion of this symmetrical trend. Now here, you know, something we'd be watching extremely closely is if you fib the most uh, the most recent move. See what just happened? Got a nice little hold of this retracement, right? So that the, we have this first move here, right? And now we've got a nice little hold here. You know, so the big question is, are we trying to press again? Is this going to hold? Or are we going to uh, uh, try and move back up? And we got another uh, little uh, dash back here. Um, another, another nice little symmetrical move to the upside here. It's a bit sloppy, it's not as pure, but you know, it could be get quite nice. So 
again, if this holds, right, the 61.8, but especially here when you get this traction, you want this to stay pure. If this holds and you see crude starting to move, this could be the, the start of the next leg higher. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be looking for this to break, but as always, there's two sides to the coin, right? It's not pure, pure, pure because it's holding a little bit heavy back below here, but it's, it's a very decent trade, right? And especially, you know, even tight longs off yesterday's close uh, with stops below those lows, that's a fairly tight uh, risk if you're looking for a, a move all the way back up in terms of, uh, of extensions, right? Does that make sense to go straight? I think it's a very, very interesting chart. Uh, this and the, uh, and the Euro, Euro GPB more from, from a tactical perspective and this more for a possible uh, swing perspective, I think are fairly interesting right here. Um, if you look at, um, you know, and then if you look at equities, um, we're still kind of chopping at high, still holding bid. I think it's fairly rare for the market to completely tank when the U.S. president is on one of these uh, parades across the board. But clearly here it looks like it definitely wants to try and clip those highs. So it'll be very interesting if it can hold the breakthrough or not. But in terms of equities, we feel that the, the real interesting chart is, uh, is IWM, right? And especially here, you know, back down, any way back into fill this gap for us is still a sell for a move back lower, right? Uh, this is still in play on this bigger setup, a very, very nice uh, risk reward on a very big roll on that setup that's still in play as far as we're concerned. So um, that's pretty much where we stand, guys. Does anybody have any comments or any questions? Anything they're looking at? <clears throat> I'm gonna try and keep this short because my voice is not um, is not up to speed yet. So again, I think a lot of interesting things. Uh, let's see what happens. There's there's potential for moves. We got the FOMC meeting today. We've got uh, OPEC coming up. So again, you know, should be interesting, guys. Let's see uh, let's see what happens, guys. Hey, Greg, my pleasure, guys. As always, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for sharing, liking. Uh, it's very much appreciated. It's always nice to know people uh, enjoying the content. Uh, it takes time to put it out. And thank you so much for all the uh, get well wishes. Very much appreciated. And um, talk to you guys soon, okay? Have an awesome one. Take care. Bye-bye.